Tesla pitched in the waves, and the crew swayed back and forth, thank you, with the motion of the boat. All of a sudden, a wave 50 feet high broke over the deck, and in its wake, standing there, was a seven foot tall blue man of Minsk, dressed only in the clothes that he was born in. <laughs> it was a sight for the crew. It was a sight for the doughty, courageous Captain Angus MacLeod. And the blue man spoke. He said, Crew! Captain! You must do my bidding. You must best me at the Habby, or you'll be sent down to the seventh ring of a mariner's hell which we believe is being a cloth merchant in Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> and so the crew, who was shivering with fear, and, you, <laughs> and Captain Angus, who feared nothing, looked up at the blue man and said, Bring it on, you blue bug-eyed bald snipe. I can take it. And so the merman began. How to defeat a Viking king. Angus and his men didn't hesitate. They said, A stout lad needs only one thing. And the merman flung back a maiden fair as a raven's wing. And the captain and crew did not flinch. They said, For she is vain. The merman smiled, And mightier than a hammer's swing. The men replied, and cold hearts pain. So through the night, back and forth, the men as one recited, of Hacken's tears the minstrels sing, each frown from her doth pluck a string, pleas and curses doth he fling, for favors fair, and yet she does not yield a thing, and he despairs. And as the sun came up, the men were lounging about the deck with the merman, as all men do after a good bar fight. <laughs> Scratching. And the merman flung his arm around Captain Angus MacLeod and he said, Laddie, how did you best me? How did you know how to do it? And Captain MacLeod looked up at the merman and said, Oh, you good hulking silly. We've been navigating the waters of the northern iambic since we were wee bears. 